I'm predicting a little bit of a time skip here. The last episode ended in such a crazy way with, you know, the whole, the whole crew, all those characters mobilizing against the Danish king. Is that them? Yeah, nice. Is this going to be the first battle? I feel like one of Knut's strategies might be to, to sow discontent among the Danish kingdom just by outing the plot to kill him. Surely he'd have supporters, right? <laughs> Man, it's it's so crazy. I have so many mixed emotions about, about this. You sort of can't help but root for them as a crew, despite having some, you know, questionable elements in there. We're all here. Whose side are you on? Yeah, that's true. It's sort of paralyzing, right? We need to ask HR. We need higher up permission from this. Oh, they're actually gonna sit down together. I've been predicting that the king gets poisoned. There's just been too many shots of wine and grapes for it to be a coincidence. Schrodinger's grape. That's not right. What is the... Damn it. The gun in the corner, but it's a grape. <laughs> You missed an arc, my friend. So many characters in the show are terrifying in their combination of conviction and some crucial piece missing. I mean, that's Thorfinn, that's Canute, that's Asklad. Another really cool thing about this is even though they're allied now, there are such forces of nature as people and characters that it can go in so many different crazy directions. And just look at Asklad, who knows where he's going to stop, right? He's an ally for now. He's waiting for the true king to return, but if it's not happening the way he wants to, he'll, he'll take the reins himself. They... Episode 20, Crown. Milk every diplomatic advantage that you have. <laughs> he just so casually drops that as an option. Now, yeah, that wouldn't be suspicious at all. Damn, he's thinking on God himself. Paradise on Earth. What could go wrong? No anime character has ever been misled by this idea. Thorfinn's most hated thing in life, philosophy. Honestly, it's been a couple episodes now of Kanu talking about his outlook and his mission. There's definitely a villainous pitfall to be had here where it's like through my own intellect and knowledge, I have identified what is correct for the, the world. I am the arbiter of this as a just and moral cause and therefore am qualified to do whatever it takes to achieve this holy mission. Spinning in God's face simultaneously, no less. I will create a brand new world of my own making. That is something that is probably always destined to be really terrible and just simply not work. Unless you're changing the very nature of, of mankind itself, all you're doing is moving pieces around and probably destroying a lot of pieces in the process. He's much more likely to create a hell than he is to create a, a paradise of any kind. If there's one thing I do like about it, it's the idea that heaven and hell are things that can be connected to on earth. To try to do the good and combat the evil that he sees right in front of him is him connecting in a very real and material way with life itself and the world that he lives in. Like, again, it's, it's so tough. This show makes it so confusing because the characters are trying to make the most out of their lives in a really, really bleak world and are so convicted and dedicated to doing some really amazing things and having such powerful traits, yet having this certain fundamental thing lacking or having a fatal flaw, like maybe a lack of humility or an ends justify the means way of, of thinking about their goals or fixating on things that will really bring them no relief or no satisfaction. Sven is going to be so shocked to see his boy and everything that's changed. It's written all over his face. But I gained something so much more important in the process. My confidence. Whatever happened to ears? Did, like he died and I miss it? Moment of silence for ears. Without further delay, nothing suspicious about that. Without hesitating in the doorwell, door, doorwell, doorway, next to my assassins, come hither. 
王の顔がわかる。Ask Lad moving up in the world. そこでよい。ひざまずけ。What kind of read does Ask Lad get on the king's face, I wonder? Yeah, he looks defeated and broken. The sleepy king is what I called him when I first saw him in the opening. More wine. More focus on wine. Zoom in on the wine. Some suspicious wine. It's all very suspicious, getting him away from his bodyguards. I mean, given that the king seems exhausted, if Knut were to develop a certain sizable following, would he not perhaps consider Knut and change his mind? It doesn't seem like he has anything against Knut. It just seems like he's making business decisions over here about what's going to work better. And it's not the same Knut that he knew. That's interesting. I guess Sven has already walked the road, knows where it goes. Another shot of the, the wine. Oh, wow. I know the true path. I know what paradise means. If only I'm in control, everything will be different. This is an interesting warning for Canute. Yeah, I can't even imagine what that feels like. I feel like you find out who you really are with power. The will of the crown. Interesting. It's like a demon in the hearts of men. That's all in the open now. Here we go. Here we go. How are you gonna talk your way out of this one? Unfazed. Totally unfazed. He just looks salty. Related to this, I can't remember where I heard it, but I heard someone say that in reference to money, money doesn't change you, it just makes you more of who you are. Which, thinking about it, it makes total sense. And I think that's probably true for power as well. Like anything that allows you to take off the limits that are not self-imposed, but are circumstantially imposed, creates a, just a larger area that you can fill. And then you end up filling it out with what you are, you know? I don't know, man. I don't know if I can even handle it. I don't think I can handle that kind of power. There are a couple of things that are especially concerning for that kind of situation. One, is that there are things that I want or I've experienced wanting things enough that I will suspend judgment in the pursuit of them. That doesn't bode well. <laughs> the other is that there are, there are definitely situations or moments in my life that make me feel resentful. And I think part of that resentment comes from a feeling of a lack of power. And so were I to actually have that power, it's conceivable that I would try to balance the scales. And I really don't think that money or power are are bad things in their own right. You know, it just depends on who you are and how you wield them. But it's kind of tough because how do you know beforehand? You gotta be pretty solid, pretty rock solid. I think probably the key indicator is how much you've come to those values or the things you believe on your own terms, resolutely, you know, without just being quote unquote good person or whatever, just because you can't do otherwise. I also feel like it must be kind of isolating to have that kind of power or have the crown, right? Because suddenly everyone's looking at your spot I don't think that's what Knut has in mind. I don't think that's what Knut has in mind either. This is really bold to say that to a king, but he read his face. ロンドンより取るけるという戦力を奪い取りました。陛下がイングランド王にご即位なされれば、かの町には幸福よりほか道はありません。口の回る男だ。And Oh, he knows! Secret's out. How does he know that? What is... what in the world? He 
It's like moving through dim dimensions right now. Asclad earning his place as guardian protector. But he got hit with a your mama insult. <laughs> so much that he like left the astral plane. <laughs> your mama is such a slave. Fascinating they came back again. Who is free? Who is a slave? Who really has power? He's a king, but he's trapped by the crown. By his own admission, no less. This is all so bizarre. <laughs> After everything that happened. We're just here hanging out. Tricking out of horns as we do. Oh, he shaved. I was wondering why he looked so different. What? <laughs> that sums up a lot of characters in this show. Oddly. The king is kind of done and tired, but he's not stupid. Yeah. He's been around the block a few million times. Asked that seemed somewhat relieved. He seemed a little bit disappointed at first. How they come crawling out of the woodwork as soon as you gain some power and influence. Speaking of being a target. Ooh, what a way to break it to him. I'm sorry. He's changed. Yeah, I wonder what Ragnar would think. I think Ragnar would be super concerned. He's no Ragnar, that's for sure. There's something really sad and lonely about this. <laughs> Thorfinn could use a girlfriend. He made it! He actually lived! Oh, but his soul is still not returned fully. <laughs> Thorfinn literally just scared the life out of him. Thorkel broke him with a look. That is shame. Well, he's not down and out. In fact, he's probably higher than he's ever been. Where we're going, we don't really need this treasure. That's interesting. For a crew of people he despised. He's treating this guy pretty well. Once again, Asclad is so focused on something that what does it even matter compared to what he's looking at right now? But is this gro growth? Is this change? Is it too much to hope for or believe in? Wait, is that Leaf? I missed him the first time. This time I'm not gonna make that mistake. Is it Leaf? That would be a crazy monkey wrench. I expected so much more from Leaf, or that's not the right way to put it. I expected him to be a much bigger part of the story since he was so heavily featured in, I guess, the prologue. I mean, for that matter, speaking of the show from then to now, a lot of my expectations were wrong. I mean, Thorfinn, at least up to this point, is not really that essential. I, I think he's sort of a silent carrier of Thors that is not expressed like some kind of latent morality gene. I still suspect that's where this is going, but in the meantime, it's it's really been more of the story of Asclad and I guess now Canute, with Thorfinn kind of being a witness, maybe even representing the audience a bit. You know, we sort of started off with him. And so in a sense, he's our eyes, but he's kind of been a, a neutral in terms of where he's gone from then to now. You know, he's just, I gotta fight Asclad to get revenge from my father, which everyone can see through. So what makes Leaf showing up interesting is that Leaf is a vestige of the of the past, of that past that's dormant inside of him. And was something like a, a father figure or, you know, older male figure 
himself in terms of clearly caring about Thorfinn, telling him stories, looking out for him, spending time with him, teaching him stuff. And also he was there for Thor's death. So they had that connection. Could this end up being the, a battle for Thorfinn's soul in the midst of all this other craziness that's happening with Aslan and Canute? Because, you know, that's going nowhere good. Or, or so I think. It's hard to tell because the characters are so complex.